conflict loom large with Russia's ongoing aggression against Ukraine starkly underscoring the fragility of peace and the critical importance that the law, order, and justice have in preserving it. This conflict has brought up into sh sharp relief the rule of law deficiencies in our own region, Southeast Europe, magnifying the urgency and the imperative of our battle against corruption. For the Western Balkans, our collective dream of joining the European Union is more than just a mere political aspiration. It is a commitment. It is a promise by our governments to us citizens to build a society on the bedrock of values outlined in Article 2 of the Treaty of the European Union, dignity, freedom, democracy, equality, the rule of law, respect for human rights. Within the EU, the utmost respect for these principles by every member state is key as all 450 million of its citizens should be able to enjoy the same level of protection of their rights and freedoms, regardless of where in the EU they work and reside. This proves that these values aren't just lofty ideals, but the, the very lifeline of a society that ensures human rights and prosperity for all. Unfortunately, we're not there yet. As Transparency International's Corruption Perceptions Index demonstrates, many Southeast European countries, EU members or not, continue to grapple with corruption. In 2022, EU member states, Bulgaria and Romania, were ranked 72nd and 63rd respectively, both worse than the year before. Some of the non-EU members in the SE region did significantly worse. Albania and Serbia stood at 101st place, which for Albania was an improvement, but for Serbia, a further degradation of its position. Bosnia and Herzegovina stood as low as 110th. These numbers aren't just rankings. They're a reflection of how citizens see corruption around them, as well as of the work that lies ahead of us. Even as members of the EU, the battle against corruption does not cease. And for those of us aspiring to join, the fight is even more critical. The European Union's fundamentals first approach in the accession process is a testament to the importance it places on ensuring that the fundamental principles of a functioning democracy are in place before definitive steps towards accession are taken. It emphasizes that the rule of law, fundamental rights, and governance structures of, are of utmost importance. And central to all of this is the fight against corruption. In that context, the more for more and less for less principle becomes especially important. Countries which showed continued progress should indeed be rewarded by progressing further in the accession process, while those that keep declining must face consequences if the transformative power of the EU's enlargement policy is ever to be restored. In that context, we eagerly await the upcoming enlargement package of the European Commission, as well as the decisions that member states will take based on the assessments made in those reports. In this struggle against corruption, each one of us, citizens, civil society organizations, think tanks, play an integral role. We are the watchdogs, the educators, the agitators, and the facilitators. We hold up the mirror to our governments, demanding transparency, promoting integrity, and calling out cases of reform backsliding and abuse of public institutions for personal interests of a few that hold the power. Fighting against such practices is our duty, our obligation to the society that we are part of and to our children who will inherit it. Romania's anti-corruption protests a few years ago are a perfect example of citizen power. The citizens' collective stand against corruption was a powerful statement and a clear demand for a government that lives up to their expectations. These events were more than just protests. They were a testament to the fact that an informed and engaged citizenry could indeed become architects of their own destiny. While we draw inspiration from such citizen-led movements, we must not lose sight of the fact that corruption has ramifications beyond our national boundaries. It's not just a scourge that eats away our society from within. It's also a vulnerability, a weak spot that malign external actors in exploit, inflicting irreparable damage on our democratic fabric. The integrity of our institutions and their resilience to such external influences is thus not just a matter of national security. It is also becoming a prerequisite on our own path towards EU membership. Among the many malign influences of corruption on society, I would like to stress its profound impact on public trust in institutions, nurturing an environment where impunity becomes the norm. I will turn to the country I know best for some examples. 
The confidence of Serbian citizens in their government capacity to respond to their needs and safeguard their rights appears to be dwindling. As evidenced by the regional power monitor under the auspices of a, of a Weber project which we are coordinating, only 14% of civil servants, so civil servants who were interviewed, who were, who were surveyed for, for the research, only 14% would feel safe and protected as a whistleblower. 75% of citizens think that they need political connections to get a job in public administration. Moreover, the Serbian government's decision-making practices remain among the opacest in the entire region. Unfortunately, these results have remained unchanged over the past years, with little done to rectify the situation. A dearth of transparency invariably leads to a withdrawal of civic participation, potentially fostering an atmosphere of social and uh, political indifference. This indifference poses a significant hurdle in rallying the necessary public backing for EU integration. An illustrative example is the dwindling public support for Serbia's EU accession, and uh, where a recent poll conducted by the Ministry of European Integration indicates a dismal 43% approval rate in a hypothetical referendum uh, for joining the EU, marking the lowest point of public support in the, last, in the past half decade. Corruption also poses a significant threat to the rule of law, as it can erode the independence and credibility of judicial systems. If judicial proceedings are stained by acts of bribery and political meddling, the neutrality and effectiveness of the courts stands at risk. The recent events in Serbia, such as the reassignment or dismissal of public prosecutors investigating politically delicate issues or delivering judgments against political, politically favored entities, communicate a clear message. It demonstrates that their work is under stringent government surveillance, encouraging them to prioritize career safety and personal interests over the pursuit of justice. The 2022 European Commission's report of Serb on, on Serbia echoes this concern, noting that despite multiple ref reforms, it remains not yet possible to observe a reduction of undue influence on judges and prosecutors in practice. This ongoing challenge directly conflicts the EU's prerequisite for an autonomous and competent judiciary, which is essential not only for safeguarding citizens' rights, but also for upholding and implementing the EU standards and legislation. In the past three years, we at CEP Belgrade have made significant contributions through the R2G4P initiative. This has involved scrutinizing corruption within the energy sector, executing thorough analysis of public procurement <coughs> procedures, and introducing innovative research utilizing the MACPI methodology in the cities of Novi Pazar and Kragujevac. Furthermore, CEP has conducted multiple evaluations of asset declarations focusing on the links between politically exposed individuals and companies in relation to Serbia's anti-corruption policies. It's vital to emphasize that all of these facets are interconnected and crucial within the broader context of state capture. Continuing this valuable work into 2023, CEP has maintained a strong focus on public procurement, specifically examining potential corruption risks and appraising the effectiveness of implemented anti-corruption strategies and measures. Dear friends, I want you to envision a future where our societies in Southeast Europe are not just participants in the global dialogue on anti-corruption but our leaders. We are the voices that matter, the examples that inspire, and the stories that teach. This future is not beyond our reach, and every, every contribution that we make towards curbing illicit, illicit financial flows, towards sanctioning corruption crimes, is a step towards that future. As you engage in, in discussions over the next couple of days, remember the power of an engaged citizenry. Remember the inspiring example of the Romanian protests, and let's make this event a significant milestone in our shared journey towards a more transparent, accountable, and just Southeast Europe. Thank you for being part of this mission. Uh, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear friends, I would like to welcome you on behalf of the Center for the Study of Democracy uh, to this meeting that we are organizing under the old but still very relevant slogan, Follow the Money. Uh, 
Uh, as you know, the European uh, Union uh, is preparing a new economic uh, security strategy uh, to be published next month, which should um, make more effective the policies uh, to counter authoritarian um, regimes that use Europe economic and financial integration as a weapon to achieve their own goals. Uh, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen uh, said earlier this year that Europe needs to be more assertive in defending its security and economic interests amid rising risk from Russia and China. Uh, the European Union is aiming to take the lessons learned uh, from the heavy dependency on Russian natural gas uh, which Kremlin has weaponized against Europe, but also against the whole world, to reconsider its reliance on other strategic sectors, from semiconductors to critical raw materials. Uh, European Union is also aiming to uh, build resilience in domains that are critical for the functioning of the democratic institutions, such as the media sectors, which are crucial part of the check and balances uh, of the institutional check and balances in our democracies. Illicit finance uh, and um, in disinformation and propaganda are two of the most potent sharp power tools that the Kremlin has deployed to undermine democratic processes in Southeast Europe. The usage of these tools has also provided fertile ground for the corrosive influence of uh, China and other authoritarian powers. Southeast Europe remains one of the most vulnerable regions in uh, Europe and uh, to different malign hybrid threats, mainly coming these days from Russia. Moscow will likely continue to seek to destabilize Southeast Europe uh, regardless of the outcome of the war in Ukraine. As you know, unfortunately, Hungary and Bulgaria, both countries of the EU and NATO, have weakened and undermined EU sanctions against Russia, uh, threatening to use their veto power or trying to get some derogations from these sanctions. Uh, Serbia also uh, has been uh, the only European country to oppose sanctions on Russia. Uh, Moldova has been threatened diplomatically, military, and economically uh, by the Kremlin, uh, pushing the country into a political crisis. Continuous tensions uh, in Southeast Europe, like, for example, between uh, Serbia and Kosovo or between Bulgaria and North Macedonia, provide further opportunities uh, for authoritarian meddling in the region by Russia and other malign foreign actors. Saying this, I want to underline the uh, importance of follow the money slogan in countering foreign malign political and economic influence uh, in the region. I hope that today's discussion uh, will add some small but important steps uh, in our understanding of um, the tools and strategies that uh, of the two strategies of state capture and media capture that uh, 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 are used to undermine our democratic uh, governance and values. And will give, a, will give us at least um, some hints how we can build better resilience. Uh, let me finish with this uh, because I know that we are expecting a very interesting debates on this topic, but before to finish, I would like to thank uh, really to our host from the European Policy Center and uh, to the EAA and Norway Grants Fund for Regional Cooperation for their support and for all giving us the possibility to organize this event. Thank you very much and I wish you very fruitful discussions. Thank you. So, and because I'm think the, the last one in the opening remarks, so uh, I will, uh, uh, want to uh, announce the first panel uh, who actually go deeper into the very topic of uh, this discussion. So on uh, uh, 
uh, discussing the illicit financial flows uh, and uh, how we can uh, actually make the uh, sanctions more effective. So uh, I will 